They are, yes, ginormous. No idea in the world what we're going to do with all this crap. If you cut it in half, it's shorter. It is. Yeah. In half the problem. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Odd Rod Garage. Tommy's back in true form. Hey, appreciate you guys coming out. Uh, we've got a lot of wiring to do. We have brakes to do on Brandon's truck. Uh, we have interior to do on Ben's truck. Um, we're going to show you all kinds of stuff today. So, glad to have you back, Tommy. It's good to be back. All right, let me tell you what we're doing. We are working on Brandon's truck. We are putting on new drop spindles, drop springs, uh, CPP, which is classic performance part, I think. Uh, they have a big brake kit. We're doing front and rear disc, ginormous rotors, and great big calipers. So it'll slam this thing to the ground. So anyway, uh, he's gonna pop it off real quick. We have these on here just so we can roll it around. We've known the entire time we're gonna do this. So we're gonna pop this loose and we're gonna get ready and we're gonna start putting in a big brake kit. Ginormous. These things are ginormous. It's like holding a fat baby, huh? Not, not as easy as that. <laughs> and you don't want to drop the freaking pieces of crap. All right, you're gonna need to get over here. I'm gonna try and lift that up on there. grease all over me. Don't put that on until we tighten up the other stuff. It makes it so much easier to tighten. Just in the middle. Hold up the hook. Alright, there's a big brake kit. They are, yes, ginormous. And apparently the gentleman who ordered them did not get it right because you see that tie rod end does not fit down. So we will have to get a ream and fix that problem. But they're gonna look pretty darn nice up front. Lowered spindles, big brakes. Thank you, CPP. Good morning, everybody. I'd ride a garage here. And today we're gonna do a rear brake disc conversion. This is on Brandon's truck. So anyway, um, Using on the Chevy to, to start uh, changing the rear brakes, we got to get the rear backing plates off, take the center uh, pan off, take our pin out, knock our axles out, and then we'll be able to start take the backing plates off and then uh, we'll start putting the other stuff on it.
Hi, how you doing? So this morning, plugged the camera in, everything was great. Then the car read full, and then the battery died. It all died. Anyway, back to what we were doing. And uh, we're doing a rear disc conversion. I mean, it bought a rear end and it's all fresh, brand new, uh, new gears, bearings, all the fun. Um, it also has a uh, posi or like a limited slip um, center section in it. So, in order to get the rear backing plates off, obviously you have to do undo the four bolts, but the axle itself has to come out. And being a Chevy, it's a normal uh, C clip rear end, excepting the fact that it's got the posi in it. So I want to show you what we did. I've already done all of it, but anyway, it's a re 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 rewind. Anyway, here's your typical Chevy center pin bolt. Loosen that. Your pin comes out. You. Whoa! What is that? That is your posi unit there. So axles are back in it. Our pin bolt is back in there. Pin's good. We're all good. So now. Uh, the kit also offered, um, gave us new studs. We'll have to see if they need to be changed. They're only about an eighth of an inch longer, but um, over the course of time, I'm gonna check the uh, acorn depth on the wheel, stuff like that, and make sure that they're that they're long enough. Um, but the next thing is we need to put the rotors on it and mount the uh, brackets for the calipers and check our run out. You know, the run out is uh, how deep the, ca the caliper sits on the rotor. And then uh, we can go on other stuff. So hang on, let's find out something. Okay, so first thing you want to do is put your rotor on and get a lug nut or something like that. If it's a normal acorn lug nut you have, just put the flat face towards the uh, rotor. That way it just keeps the rotor on there. All right, something like that. And then it also gives you shims to go in between here to check your, to change your run out. Um, obviously, uh, these calipers don't state left or right side, but if you look at it, the bleeder's above, um, the bleeder is above the, the brake line. So anyway, it's going to go on that. We're on the driver rear side here right now. Okay. So there's our bracket on the caliper there. And let's just slip this thing on here and get an eyeball on what's going on. I want to make sure that the caliper itself is in like a, like a neutral position, like right in the center of it, something like that. We need the bracket on there, and we'll just do just this one spacer here. Alright. And we... So now a rotor. Now El Calperino. All right, guys. So I'm a bit of a perfectionist, but anyway, we got the run out figured out on uh, Brandon's rear brakes. And I'll show you what we got here. But do you see? Can you see that the difference between here and here? Because uh, when you're setting up brakes like this, that's what matters. Is you want the rear, you know, where it straddles the rotor. You want to watch those. Uh, tolerances because again the rotor floats anyway so now uh, we got their saddle everybody everybody wants to line up where it's at so now I'm gonna go ahead and bolt up the other side I won't bore you with that but I'll go ahead and bolt up the other side and then um, it's probably prudent do we change these studs uh, we got another set of studs for this thing and they're about an eighth inch longer a little bit longer than an eighth inch but anyway um, that's to allocate for the room for the rotor um, so anyway Take the side back apart, both that side together, change the studs on both sides, and then uh, they can actually, I can bolt it all nice and tight again. So anyway, hang on, I'll be back. What's up everybody? So I'm back. I wanna show you something here real quick. So that is the starts with the rear brake conversion. And this flex hose comes from here to the frame right there. But I think it's going to be a little bit short because the truck's rear end is not suspended. So we'll probably have to make another bracket for that. No biggie deal. We always do that kind of stuff. Anyway, 
stainless steel line over here we and we have a clamp there on the housing there and a clamp right here and uh anyway so there's the starts of something now i don't know if you remember me saying before that i thought we'd have to change the studs <clears throat> these are the new studs that i already changed they're they're about an eighth of an inch longer maybe a little bit longer than that and that's pretty much to facilitate the difference between the rotor thickness and a brake drum so because i didn't want the posi unit to move what i ended up doing was i changed the studs with the axles back in the rear end because i took one out um took the backing plate off slid it back in did the same on the passenger side and uh, that way i didn't want nothing to move and it got it all back together all right guys it's your uh, typical booster push rod pivot point for the pedal brackets all that stuff <clears throat> i've had to move these brackets around a little bit to where i could get at least to this hole and this is this hole so probably what i'll do is once i get it mounted i'll mark the firewall and punch for a couple more holes because um, i don't think i would rather really would rather not just depend on two holes starts of that we'll go ahead and cinch that guy down so let's go ahead and stick the bolt on the other side and then we'll tighten one side up Like yeah. Okay, so we have a hole here. That hole looks good. Looks like a usable item. Um, we'll have to scratch the firewall and punch a hole here and another one up here. But before, we're, before we get too far along, I want to make sure that our trajectory for the push rod is relatively okay. Can you see that push rod? Right there. Here's a hole. Looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, the push rod's about where we want it. I'm going to take the booster back off, but before I do, scratch my holes, uh, take the booster out, and uh, I'm going to measure my push rod and probably cinch down one side. Um, so let's go ahead and take it off and see what we got. This one I have to get a little, I have to shave half the head off just because of the webbing in there. This should be the lower Pretty much wraps up another week didn't get anything done or it sure feels like that sometimes doesn't it anyway got a little brake work done master cylinder um, our brake booster got uh, I learned how to take a Chevy Plaza unit apart there you go it was <laughs> easier than we thought to begin with yeah but you know how it is you start digging into something you haven't really been messing with a lot and yeah just take your time you should be all right yeah learn as you go and when it breaks, blame it on somebody else. Right. That's the way it goes. What's this do? What's that part for? Yeah. Well, there are extra parts. We <laughs> always have extra right. parts. I don't know. There, aren't there supposed to be extra bolts? Yeah. I'm pretty sure there are. <laughs> yeah. Those thing engineers. Dang engineers, they don't know anything. Hey, we appreciate you guys coming out and spending time with us. And as always, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.